let's do it here. Okay. Two. Okay, guys, uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. Right. yeah. So uh, <clears throat> for those who were not in the uh, uh, last Monday's class, this class is about the uh, computer networks. And for this semester, since it is expected to be full online, and I'm going to ask you the participation. Participation doesn't mean you are uh, log on to the uh, Zoom, but it is meaning uh, you respond to my question and you raise the question. OK, so that will be counted. And I think it, that will differentiate the final score in the end. All right. So, just wait to... Okay, so uh, I'm going to quickly review what we talked about uh, last Monday. And go back to the point interaction. So all the slide is on the uh, website and I'm making new homework and I'm making new uh, uh, program practice. And if you wanna do, uh, the, all the homework will be given by the Anaconda. Do you guys know how to use Anaconda? Okay, I'm gonna quickly review what is Anaconda. And so let me start with the uh, quick review, what we learned last Monday. So Monday, we talk about the, um, the very basic introduction and what we're going to learn over the semester. So this course is about the uh, broad coverage of topic in computer networks. And I'm also going to talk about the uh, latest topics. But I'm not going to talk about how do you configure your Cisco router, how do you configure your Juniper routers. Okay. And And about the network, what is network? So we compare the network to the transportation system and how could we match to the human light? Okay, so network maybe does not exist, uh, maybe does not, network does not exist uh, 40 years ago. Now we're living in a world of network. Without network, you will be very nervous. Okay, okay so we compare side by side and we talk about what is internet and how big it is, who controls this. And we talk about the users over the year by the country and the traffic we're talking about. And most of the traffic is consumed by the video streaming and app by the phone, not by the computer usually. Because you are using computer because you are a computer scientist, but most of people don't use that topic. So where is your time spent? Uh, social network, Facebook, Instagram, most of your time, right? And we are uh, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. That's one of them. Okay, so this is the uh, big player in the internet world. Okay, so we had a, in 2014, we had the Grand Cross. Grand Cross meaning the mobile users are exceed the desktop users. So in the future, in 2030, I don't think that people will purchase the uh, desktop. So they're gonna purchase the uh, notebook at best. Maybe iPad and iPhone will be the dominant device. And we talked about circuit switching and packet switching and multiplexing. And among those, we talk about TDMA and FDMA. And we also talk about OFDMA. What's the TDMA? So we have to share at some point, something like this, okay? Somewhere like this, we have to share. The one computer should be connected, multiple computer may be connected to one device. That device to that device need to be shared. Then how can we share it? That is about, that is about multiplexing. And they are all integrated to one and that, there must be the way, the sharing. So how, gonna sh how are we going to share? So one method, the, the very basic method is TDOA. Time division multiple, multiplexing. Let's call TDM. Time division multiplexing. Which means when I'm talking, the other is silent. Then second guy talking and the other is silent. 
and as a token. Who has a hold? Whoever holds the token can speak. Everyone else should be silent. Then TDMA. Okay. Then what is the FTM? Frequency division multiplexing. Multiplexing. Uh, FDM does need to have a token, but I'm shared some frequency, and that frequency I can use it. I can use it as long as I want. So what's the uh, industry's choice as of today's technology? We call OFDM or OFDMA. What's OFDM? So orthogonality frequency and division multiple. So I have to share this amount of frequency. If I'm using TDMA, one guy talk, the other guy silent. The other guy talk, then the rest of them silent, one by one. But FDMA, divide the frequency, and one guy keep using this, second user keep using this, and third user keep using this. What FDMA using, so this is basic FDM, or FDM look like this. They are somehow share some frequency. How that is possible? Because that frequency and that frequency, okay, sub frequency one and sub frequency two has orthogonality. Orthogonality meaning even I'm using frequency one, frequency two does not affect it. Okay, therefore they can be overlapped. That is the industry's choice. All your LTE, all your Wi-Fi, and everything, almost everything you're using for wireless are using a OFDM. Okay. All right, so multiplexing, how does it work? So statistical multiplexing like TDM, shared and one guy talking sequentially. So when they are try to talk together, meaning there is a collision. No one can receive any. So what's the issue with the packet switching? So there is no guarantee bandwidth because we are contention-based. How to build the application require QoS, meaning there is no guarantee. You, you have to compete through. And there's per packet over because per packet, I have to specify who's, who's sending and who's the destination? Who's the receiver, who's the sender, okay? And it is very complex to end-to-end -end control. When there are very many people try to do at the same time, it is congested. And we should have end-to-end -end control and delay and congestion control. So no congestion control can lead arbitrary delay and packet drops. So we should have a delay and congestion control and end-to-end -end pearl. So we're gonna talk about this detail over the semester. So today, Why is it two? Okay, so today we're going to talk about layering. What is layering? Why do we need this? Layering meaning something like this. Let's say you are building applications and I want to connect from A to B. How does it work? Yeah. Sending my package to them. Hmm? So to do that, you have to specify who am I, and if something happened, I want to come back. Like you are sending a post, right? And when, when I package it, I have to specify send it to and send it from. And if there is someone in the middle, they may see up to this information, but nothing inside, okay? That's the uh, layering concept. 
Okay, we're gonna detail, we're gonna talk about this. Too. So building application, network application involves communication over two or more hosts. Often complex functions need to be realized. So let's think about this. So many applications may share the common functionality. Can you think about examples like a post, maybe the, uh, your bus system? And if it is, uh, uh, let's say it is your application, if you are app developer, what is being shared? Uh, basic library. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just assume that uh, I'm going to use a network, something like this. Whenever you are write an app, you don't you don't completely build a TCP or you don't completely build a UDP. You know, you're just using you're just using. Oh, I'm going to use a Wi-Fi. That's it, right? This functionality need to be integrated on each application. If I am sender, there must be a receiver correspondent, right? Then if I encode it in some way, there is the there, the receiver should able to see the decoded. Okay, let's talk about the FTP and video on demand. What is FTP? So uh, let's slow down the class and let's talk about what is FTP. Maybe this is a good time for raise your voice. If not, if nobody, yeah, I'm gonna pick one. Is it file transfer file protocol? protocol? Yeah, it's a file transfer protocol. What is FTP in human language? You send the files to the internet. Hmm? You send the files to the internet. Send the file to the internet. Uh, it's maybe too abstract. Can you make a little detail? I think it's a set of rules that need to be followed while like transferring files from computer over the internet. Like downloading yes. or uploading. So what's the difference between VOD, video on demand, and FTP? I think FTP needs to like first it needs to set up a connection and mm. then transfer files. And then once it's done, mm. then like uh, like bo both machines has to uh, like set up a connection. Okay, so uh, so before you talk, uh, can I know your name, please? Janar and uh, Janar. So, which means uh, so FTP? What I meant is file transfer protocol and video on demand is a video watching. Okay, both of them share the uh, network connection. Then the network end of endo network. So what makes the difference is FTP. If the one bit is wrong, they have to send it again, right? Because you are downloading a Windows and a couple of bits are contaminated. Then, which means you have to download it again, either in the whole file or that portion. Only. That's FTP file transfer. VOD is a, let's say you are watching a. MLB Live, Major League Baseball. So if the one bit or two bit is wrong, does it need to be uh, retransmitted? No, because the time is, is the, the Major League uh, Baseball or live streaming is very sensitive in terms of time man. If the, that event it was the previous, I don't need to worry about it. I, won't, I worry about the live now, right? Do you, everybody understand that? No? Okay, so difference between FTP and VOD, let's say I have this amount of file, let's say it is uh, slide for lecture two, and let's say this is uh, live streaming now. So let's say it is June, okay? So we are doing this too. You just downloaded the uh, lecture two slide from a website and you are watching June now, okay? What is important? So integrity of the file is important. If the, some bits are wrong, you are, maybe you are not able to open the file or some information is missing, which means I have to guarantee. I wanted this message again. Right, but what about live streaming? Some lagging, my voice is broken somehow. 
Is it important? No. Now, what he is talking, what am I talking about? Not what Gerard, Gerard are talking about is important. So, integrity of the file is a critical, but on time message is critical on this. Okay, that's, that's what I meant. So, FTP and VOD both follows the uh, like server and client model. There's a server. Server on the um, uh, slide should be google.com. And server live streaming is my computer. My com means uh, instructor's, instructor's computer. And client, your notebook. And at the same time, your notebook is client for the gym. Okay. It basically, both of them are established request and reply channel and message stream channel. And use the smallest number of the uh, channel of subtraction and FTP utilize the request and reply. BOD use, utilize message stream channel. And both use a host to host communication protocol. Okay, so we're gonna clarify on this concept. So this is, uh, let's, let me give you the full name of RRP. RRP, the request and reply protocol. MSP is message streaming protocol. HHP is host to host protocol. So previously, I had a Zoom, uh, I had a Google file, Google file on lecture two, and I had a Zoom on, let's say, Zoom four on um, lecture two. So my host is a server or instructor's computer. My host is client and that is students, you, computer. Okay. What is the common? Oh, I have to establish host to host. I have to somehow connect it by an internet to the host of the Google, then I may use RRP, request and reply, or message streaming. So file application, something like Google file transfer using this and go to it this way and going this way. Okay, how about Zoom? Zoom using video application, MSP, HHP, and come in here, HHP, and video application. Clear? So go back to the point. Uh, okay. So example of the FTP and VOD, like uh, Google Drive versus the Zoom link, how they are different. So one using streaming, the other using a file transfer, okay? If you look at it here, they are commonly sharing HHP host to host protocol, but they are using different application and they are using a request reply or message streaming. Okay, so there must be, there must have correspondent and there must be have correspondent. Receiver knows how I sent it. Okay, so any question about this? Too easy for you? Okay, then, so layering abstract. So let's talk about the uh, layering. Layering, why is the layering is important? Layering is a set of functionality encapsulated in an object that can be used by other networks. So without networking, without layering, what should you do? We don't know what the uh, client looked like. Then I have to implement it full stack. But what if I have a layer? I am layer seven application uh, software engineer. I only need to worry about layer seven at the transmitter and the receiver. But if there is no layering concept, then I have to care about layer one to seven, which means it is very hard to be specialized in all areas. 
Okay, so So layering abstraction is critical key for the successful of the computer network and successfulness of the uh, computer programming. So example, the network layer implements the end-to-end -end packet delivery while layering. So the, the, the network is so complex, there, so there must be simplified the per layer per layer. So if I am a, a router designer, I only need to worry about layer three. If I am an app designer, I only need to care about layer seven. If I am a radio designer, I only need to layer one. Okay, so layering consists of protocol. Layer seven correspond to layer seven. Layer six correspond to layer six, and all these things happen. So, if you are the writer, uh, if if you are the writer of the program, you only need to care about your layer and corresponding layer, and how does it communicate up and down? How you communicate up and down? Why do you need to communicate up and down? I understand. I think you understand the corresponding one, but why do you need to worry about up and down? Because your message, let's say you are layer seven uh, app designer, your app goes to the uh, lower protocol. In the end, it goes to the network, physical network of the device, then from uh, cloud, internet, then goes to there as corresponding one is here. So from here, your message is small, and from layer two, you're adding header, and from layer Five, you are heading more headers and headers and in the end you have a multiple headers and through the internet what they are receiving is multiple headers with the payload payload is the actual payload in here then one layer height then you are decapsulating one 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 header then your message is shorter because you just decoded the header and layer here you are decoded a step by step and your header is removed, in the end, you are able to see the payload. Clear? Okay, so look into layers a bit closer. So protocol in each layer head. So service interface up and down, up and down, and peer-to-peer -peer interface in host on the same layer. So corresponding one, okay? So hierarchy of the network uh, structure. So layering implies the use of a layer hierarchy. So let's say I have a five layers. Layer one corresponding to layer one. Okay, I should have a layer one protocol. What is protocol? So keep silent doesn't help you. So what is protocol? Protocols are rules to be followed. Mm. Set of instructions. Hmm? Set of in instructions. Yes, yeah, set of instruction and the, the messages, how we communicate the messages. Meaning that if I write in, let's say I'm speaking English, so it should be English and there must be verb, there must be subject, there must be objective, something like this. The other one, understand, okay, if you're talking about E, oh, I'm expecting BSO, protocol. How do we communicate? We have to follow the rule, like a languages. Okay, so if I'm giving uh, some puzzles, so how to open the, the puzzle locker? So left two times, right two times, and up two times and down two times, then you can open it. There must have a protocol, so how to open it? What's the protocol procedure for COVID-19? So level two is, check your thermometer and you are not allowed to get it together over 50. You have to follow the pro, okay? So basic concept and encapsulation. Encapsulation, we talk about the process of embedding header or trailer. So let's say you wrote the application and there is your data and go to the RRP, request and reply protocol, then you are adding RRP at the head of data. Then you go to HHP, what happened? So HHP, your RRP, and your data. Okay, that is transferred over the internet because here you're receiving these messages 
HHP RIP data. Then from here, you know how to deal with because you know the protocol. Then I can remove HHP. From here, you have RRP and the data. From here, RRP, you know how to deal with the RRP, then you can, you can decode it properly. Then you will see data, and you are able to see the data on your application. That is the encapsulation, okay? You may add to a header, or you may add to the trailer. So OSI layers, so OSI layer is, so open system interconnections. So a long time ago, okay, oh, we need encapsulation. We need a layering. Who make decision? Let's make an international standard. Then everybody can share the internet properly. Okay, that is OSI. So OSI is open system interconnections. It has a seven layers of protocols and application for each layer. Act like a reference model rather than a real world protocol. So there is the group of people get together. Okay, what is the right way to communicate over the internet? Oh, we understand the encapsulation is critical and layering is critical. To do that, so if you, everybody has, a, Sony has a different protocol. Samsung has a different layering and the Google has a different layering. Then everybody has their own protocol, meaning it doesn't work. So we should have a one protocol that everybody follows. Okay, that is OSI. OSI layers is a seven layer, application, presentation, session, transport, network, data link, and physical. On the other side, in reverse way, physical, data, network, transport, session, presentation, and application. So from the bottom, we call the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So if you are radio engineer, you may suck at the physical layer. If you're a router engineer, you may stick with the uh, network engineer. If you are app developer, you may stay, stay with the application layer. Okay, so that is OSI. So I used to memorize this in my undergraduate, but I want you to understand this, okay? So I understand seven layer, and what is this? Ah, okay. Let's say I wrote the I wrote the application, and I want to transfer. Uh, let's say, uh, let's say I'm a Hu Jin, and let's say I'm a Chong Chong Min. Okay. Let's say I'm Hu Jin and Chong Min. Hu Jin wrote the messages to Chong Min. Hey, let's get together to do the homework together. Homework. Homework number one, then he wrote the application. And I want to send it to JM and from Ho Jin. And this is my message. Hello. Let me. My drawing tool. Okay, here we go. So let's say I'm um, HJ and I want to send message to the uh, uh, J, JN. Okay, my message is hello, let's do homework together. And this is my message, which is my payload. Okay, then from HJ's computer to JM's computer. So you just wrote the messages and go to the present from application layer and you go to presentation and go to the, your network. Network meaning, hey, I am the sender and I wanna know, I know who's destination, then here's my message. 
and your um, Mac network layer transport layer says, okay, here's my Mac address. And I want to reply to this information, Mac 2. And this is message. In the physical layer, hey, I want to use uh, LAN. And I want to use M and P, V, S, and messages. Okay. So it is somehow delivered to JM via LAN. Then I'm deleting LAN. Then M1 and M2 and B and S. So by looking at destination, I can reach here. Meaning, oh, up to host to host, host to host is not an issue. Then how does this happen in the middle? Okay, somewhere in the middle should be able to see up to this point, D and S. Okay, I should know who's your destination, then I can forward next. You are not living in one hub. If I'm sending from SUNY Korea, uh, C, C413 desktop, is, which is me, and JM, let's say he is in Seoul National University and building 72, 7215 room and desktop 27th. Okay, meaning I have to write all this information, address information in here. SUNY Korea goes to Yeonsu, goes to Incheon, Incheon goes to Seoul, Seoul goes to SNU, SNU goes to the building 72, building 72 goes to room 7215, then desktop 27. How does that happen? Because I should able to encapsulate and decapsulate, meaning I should be able to see up to who's my destination. Then I can forward next. Oh, the next guy received, okay, who's, that, who's the destination? Then keep forwarding, keep forwarding, and keep forwarding. Okay, that's the basic application, basic layering concept. Then come back to here. Better about. Okay. So in the middle, they should have ability to see a network. They see a network and the data link and the physical. Then how the how your packet traveled from here, go to there, go to there. Ah, this is the way your message travels. What if I have a multiple points? If I have one host and there is a, another host, host is at SNU, host at SUNY Korea, and in the middle, in Yeonsu router, Incheon router, Seoul router, SNU router. Your packet travels Duh. Okay. okay. If you want to talk to the uh, if you want to talk to SUNY Korea to SPU, same thing happen from your computer. SUNY Korea goes to Yeonsu router. That goes to Incheon router. That goes to Hawaii router. Not sure. Let's go to the LA router. Let's go to the uh, New York router and SPU router. And that travel like this. Okay. So that is the basic layering concept. So layer layers of the OSI. So if I read through the uh, bottom up physical layer, which is my layer one, take care about the transmission and reception of the row bits. Row bits really one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. That, that is what we call the row bits. And data link maps bits into the frame. Frames dictate the sharing of the common medium and correct 
and detect error we order frames what is frame so if i'm sending uh to the uh hj hey i want to see you in long sentences how does it travel the, the my message needs to be broken down into smaller pieces that 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 is called the frames the message to the message message to the message like i am talking in a gym my message is broken into smaller pieces then deliver to your computer and then play it back. Okay, that is the frame. And network layer, route packet to destination. Oh, we know what the route is. In the middle, there is a router, then I get delivered to the next top, deliver to the next. Okay, and transport layer is take care about the flow control and condition control. Error control and transparent uh, transport to the upper layer. Meaning, if there are so many people I try to use the one router, Hey, you slowed down. How about this router? Can you reroute to that router? Okay, that's transfer layer. And transfer layer sometimes end to end, end to end, meaning if I'm keep sending a, a 4K video, you may not receive it properly. So hey, can you slow it down to the HD? Then I can handle, then I can digest it. Oh, end to end, they are communicating and handshake. Oh, let's make the decision properly. You are asking too high, let's slow it down. A session layer establishes connection among hosts. Duplex, half duplex. Duplex meaning if I am talking, at the same time I'm able to receive. Half duplex meaning if I am talking, I'm not able to receive. While I am receiving, I'm not, a, I'm not able to talk. Wireless is a half duplex. If you receive your notebook, divide the time into small pieces. When they are talking, meaning when I transmit, I only do transmit. Otherwise, I have to listen. Therefore, I can listen the packets. Okay? Duplex is your wired network. Your wired, your tap on your server or on your computer, notebook. You are connected to the LAN. Right? That's duplex. While you are talking, while you are transmitting packages, then you are able to receive them because I have four pairs of the connection. Okay, that is usually your wired is much faster than wireless. And for presentation layer is negotiation of the uh, uh, format of the data exchange between host. Negotiation meaning, oh, uh, make it slow. What you want to send? Okay, I want to do uh, video streaming. I want to do a file transfer. Application is an application service such as FTP or mail and HTTP, the app that you are using, okay? So this is a basic internet architecture. So your interface, internet and FTDI, internet, you know internet, you're the wire, and FTDI is a fiber optic connection, and there's IP, internet protocol, and above that, there's a TCP, it will be TCP or UDP, on TCP, you can use the FTP or HTTP, or UDP is TFTP or DNS. Okay, so actual your uh, internet architecture look like this. Application actually covers so many areas. And there is no presentation, there is no session protocol. And we just call internet layer as one, two, three, four. And look in this way. Okay, this is the uh, industry as a choice. And if you compare it to two architecture, so OSI, long time ago, okay. Let's make a decision internationally. Then they set up the seven layers and people are following. Okay, in real world the internet, uh, you know what? That is uh, too theoretical. Let's do it in more practical way. So host to host network and internet and transport and application. The four layers. If you come back to here, this is right representation of the uh, internet architecture. So motivation of the uh, IP network. So communication should continue despite the failure. So if the things have failed, what should it do? Try to fix it again? No, just keep running and try to fix that point only. So survive the human failure or physical attack. So meaning if the tag is attacked, so I need to continue service. The traffic between two hosts continue on another path. 
Meaning, if the sum route is fixed, uh, let's say your HJ and your MJ, and you are connected by Yonsei uh, Universities, Universities router. So connected and connected the back. But Yonsei University is too crowded, it doesn't work well, and somehow it is attacked. Then what should it do? I should reroute to SUNY K server. Then they are keep sharing. Okay, so internet IP network works in this way. I'm not maintain, I'm not relying on one computer, one router. I'm preparing multiple paths. If there's something bad happened, then I can automatically reroute. And so support multiple types of the communication services and dip, differing requirements, speed and latency and liability. So let's say Yonsei University has a better speed. Speed is better, but reliability is low. So SUNY Korea's speed is low and reliability is high. Okay, which means if the something needs a high speed, I'm fixed on, I stick to the Yonsei, but if I'm talking about more reliable communication, I may choose the SUNY Korea. Okay, so, Bi-directional reliable delivery and message system and accommodate a variety of networks. So both military and commercial facility and minimize the assumption about the underlying network. So that's the motivation of the network. If there's something bad happened, there must be, there's mostly, there must be the, the second option. And I should take care about the uh, variety of the applications and something bad happened or something good happened, I should always have the second option. So it should work in, in the military, meaning if something happens seriously, meaning some devices has priority, I should keep them on more chances. So, so other driving goals is somehow mad is permit distributed management of the resources. The internet doesn't like the central control because if the central control goes die or compromised, the whole system goes down then the internet doesn't want to have that happen. So that they want to have distributed management. If the one die or one out of business, uh, I don't really care because I have a second option. Okay. So it is cost effective and statistical, statistical multiplexing through a packet switch. The, though packet header retransfer wasteful, but I can divide it to the smaller and smaller pieces. If the one packet is lost, I don't need to send the whole frame, whole messages, but I, that packet needs to be retransmitted. Okay, so each of attack, attaching new host. If the new host is coming into the um, pool, then it should be naturally connected easily. And standard implementation of the host and host protocol and still need a fair amount of the end host software. So we're gonna talk about this and accountability for use of the resources. Monitoring function in the node, and though that is not fell limited and immature, but accountability is something going to happen. So I want to, I want to be fixed on time, and I want to monitor properly. Okay, so how can you monitor all the all your neighbors? Okay, so let's talk about the. Uh, uh, Layering from, let's review quickly. So any question about the layering? You guys clear about the concept of layer? So I'm, I'm gonna pick you. Hanmin? Yes. Okay, so any, so how's the layering concept? Is it understandable? Uh, I'm still catching up, but that was a good explanation. Okay, so what is not clear about the uh, layering concept? Uh, um, I'm a little uh, confused about the comparison of the two architectures, like using the TCP and IP. So, okay, this slide. 
Uh, okay, so let's see the, let's see why is that happen. So what drives in here? Meaning the OSI layer is started from, uh, okay, everybody, Sony has their own protocol. Samsung has own protocol, Google has own protocol. Meaning if I want my device want to talk to Google device, it doesn't work because they are not sharing a protocol. Then the international group getting together. Let's make a standard. If you want to build a application, you have to follow these rules that we call the pearl. Okay, that's the theoretical and the fundamental decision. Then as the internet advance over time on over time, hey, we learned that TCP IP is more efficient and more practical. Then presentation and session protocol is not that necessary. Then TCP IP internet protocol skip that and focus on application and transport and internet host to host. And this is the today's internet architecture. Okay, so if you're using any internet or if you if you're developing any application, you are strictly following this model. Does it clarify? Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna pick one, one, one more. Then everybody can. So Ho Jin, I mean, thank you. Ho Jin. Okay. Ho Jin not responding. How about J one? Yes, sir. Okay, so any question about the layering concept? Uh, questions? Uh, yeah, question or remark? Uh, I don't have any questions. Okay, too easy? Well, <laughs> not that, but. Okay, all right, so, uh, okay, all right, so. I'm going to share my screen on this one. Uh, okay, maybe so one theoretical question? Yeah, sure. So uh, you're saying that uh, uh, like, like RRP, uh, they, they handle error, they handle errors, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, let's say like, uh, host A sending data to host B. And let's say host B received some uh, damaged bits. And then how does B know that they are mm. damaged? Does it send it back to A to recheck? Wait again, in which layer? So you don't specify the layer. Let's say somehow damaged is that what your question is? Yeah, like in the, like maybe in transport protocol, uh, uh, let's say bits are damaged. How does yes. we know that, that they are damaged? Oh, I check. So every frame, so good question. So every layer, is it? So every layer, they have a checksum. So they, we call the check. Checksum meaning, Oh, I received this email and I received this message. I want to clarify, is it really intact? So at the tail of it, there is a, the encryption mechanism, make sure that number should be correct. Okay, if the any bit is wrong, that number is not matching. So we're going to talk about layer in two lectures later, uh, two lectures later, then check some guarantees the message is correct or no which means checksum is usually like this. Okay, let's say one zero one 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 zero zero is your message and check from here that is checksum. Checksum always guarantee the count of one is a zero, uh, even one, two, three, uh. four. So it should be zero, zero, zero. Your message in. But if the one is gone, meaning one zero one one zero 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 zero, then it should be zero zero zero, meaning oh, this doesn't match. 
So error, send this packet again. I see, Clear? I see. Okay, so that, that is basic of the basic parity. So if you make a small packet, one, 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 zero, zero. So let's say I have a one checksum, which means one, two, three, four, should be zero. If something happened, this one changed to one, meaning one, 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 zero is received. Then one, two, three, four. No, it should be even, right? So this packet is wrong. So we have a mechanism to check it. The, the, it's, it's advanced to the checksum and the CRC and the parity and all these things. We're going to talk about this in, I think it is one week later. Okay, so you are a Janar, right? Yep. Okay, good. Anyone else? So Hojin's mic is not working. Try to fix it next time. Okay, and I want to call one more. Min Hang Lee? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Okay, so any question about it? Um, I have one question about the data link layer, what you, what you said about the frames. Mm. I don't get the concept. Frame? Okay, so. Okay. Frame is like this. Let's say I make a messages, very long messages, like your uh, uh, Minhang's profile. Let's say Minhang's a CV. It's a long messages. Okay. So how does it transfer over the internet? So this message should be fragmented. Let's say CB or Minhang's uh, like a interview video, okay, like a demo video. Let's say Min Hang is a dancer and he wants to send his video to the SM or JIP. And that video is fragmented in small and headers and tail and headers and tail. Okay, then that is delivered. If let's say it is delivered to uh, fragmented to 100 messages. If the message two is gone, what should I do? I only need to two again. How do you know? That we're gonna talk about the fragmentation and layering. So basic concept is your message is too big to deliver by a one packet. Then I fragment it and sub messages are delivered on the corresponding application is reassembled as a whole. But in a lower, they are all fragmented as small. It is possible because we are using a layering concept. Okay, your application may be long, your TCP IP and transport layer is fragmented and smaller and smaller. The corresponding layer only care about, okay, smaller packets integrity, integrity. Reassemble back is your corresponding application. Clear? So is there, is there is there any like a set of form for every, um, so is it the frames are the same for audios and videos and every other data? Uh, okay, so at the header of it, it specified this is a video and this is how I fragment it at the header of the each packet. So packet size is defined by your network. If you're using LTE, the packet size is small. If you're using LAN, the packet size is longer. Clear enough? No, so you, it, you, you can keep it depends on the, so it depends on the, um, the method of the transmission? Uh, is this depend on the method? Is it? Uh, is, yes, is yes and no. I'm, I'm explaining now. So let's say your messages are given and send the messages. We call the handshake. Hey, I'm going to send about this message this long. What is the best size of the packet? Oh, the receiver says, okay, your message, your point and my point is this value and we should make a decision properly. Uh, how about divide it to the seven? Then comes back and oh, oh now I divide it to seven frames. 
and sending this information. So before I sending messages, I make, I send my information, hey, this is what I'm going to do. What's the network status? Meaning based on your network, if you're using LTE, the, the fragmented should be smaller. You're, if you're using Wi-Fi, if you're using a LAN, fragmented could be longer. Then this information is reflected in your fragmentation. Oh, yep, I got it. Okay. All right. So, and if you want to give a question, I love to hear the crazy idea. And okay. anyone else? Uh, professor, my name is Ulkbek. Uh, wait a second. Uh, the, who was the Hammin, right? Ham, before, after the Hammin, who was the name? J1 is the link, right? Yep. Yeah, J1, thank you. And who's the next voice? Uh, Ulkbek. Ulkbek, okay. Okay, question. Uh, when you send a message, to other someone else, like how it might get lost in internet. How does it get lost? Yeah, how it get lost or how it might be a wrong message. Mm. Okay, let's talk about lost messages. Okay, so there is a router at SUNY Korea. I can I am a sender one, and I am student two, student three, and student 10. They're all sharing this SUNY K routers. And SUNY K router can handle 20 users at one time, okay? This is router's capacity. Let's say SUNY Korea purchased $10,000 router, okay? That, that may be, some students, student, student 24 decided himself, I want to be a, a YouTube streamer. And the key is keep using this internet. And he affected the others. Student 47 also want to do YouTube streamer. Then router is overloaded. Then router start to rejecting it. Okay, this is how much I can handle. So I'm keep rejecting it, right? Therefore, you sent the messages, but your message is blocked somehow. That is why you lose your packet. At the same time, the same scenario, but it, a little different. So let's say SUNY Korea, 20 capacities router, and there is a Yonsu University, 100 capacity routers. And SUNY Korea keeps sending it full maximum and there is a new pattern in the Yonsei University. Many streamers come to the um, school and they are keeps using a Yonsei Yonsu router. Meaning your message is delivered to the SUNY Korea router is delivered again. Oh, Yonsei University has a, a Yonsei Yonsei Gu has a 20,000 router that can handle 100 users but is the network is too overloaded and they keep start to rejecting it. So your packet is lost. That's how you lost the packet. And also the, in, the, in the meanwhile delivery, so your message is not delivered, then he's trying to keep again, keep again, keep again, keep again. So that's the basic reasons why is it delayed so long, meaning is your message is not delivered. On time. So you're saying that lost messages depend whether a router is rejected or not? Uh, yeah, majority of the uh, lost packet is the router's capacity. Okay. So there is other method, other reasons why, but a uh, basic reason. So if, if I send this, I want to come, I want to check it back. Meaning my message delivered properly, the check back, right? but I'm not able to receive the check back, but I keep sending it. And I'm sending again, second router, meaning the message should be delivered on time, but it'll deliver out of order and long time later, meaning it's somehow delivered, but we consider this one as a lost packet because it delivered too long. Okay, so we call the seven, seven times 
or trial, after seven times, we give up. The basic network tries seven times at best. If it's not delivered at seven times, at seven times, it give up. Give up meaning you have to wait for a while and notice by the users and user make new decisions. Okay, any other question? Um, professor? Yeah. My name is Yanshi Kang and I want to have a question that Yon, you Yonshi said. Kang? Yes, yes. Uh, you said that traffic between two hosts continue mm. on another path. Mm. Then what if the routers keep reject your message then the packet cannot find any other routers? So I'm keep trying, rejected four times. And fifth time I tried the, the second router, right? There is a receiver who's expecting this messages a long time before t minus 10 and t and t plus 10. So if I receive the message continuously and it is not responding for a while, then receive start to receiving again because of rerouting, right? But your receiver has a limit. I only wait for uh, 10 seconds. If it is longer than 10 seconds, I assume there is a loss. I assume there is something wrong, right? So then I told you, told the sender again, okay, something wrong. I think we should have a different method. So you are reroute, yes, you can reroute, but maybe it will take longer. So the receiver assumes there's packet is lost. Clear? Clear. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, before I end the class, I want to show you the, how you do your homework. Okay. So for your homework, you're going to use the Anaconda. Search the uh, web, Anaconda download. You can download your individual edition, Anaconda. After downloading it, so get started. So you can download individual edition. Download, here, here is download button. You can download the uh, Anaconda. Then you will see uh, Anaconda on your computer. Okay, from this application, we will going to use a notebook, Jupyter Notebook, click it. Then there will be Jupyter Router. Let's say you just download your uh, homework number one from me. So I'm going to give you the Python I Notebook. So something like this, Labs. So lab zero. So something like this. Let's say I just gave you this file and you're opening this file on your local computer. Then the, I wrote the uh, most of the code. Your job is start your 
start to write in here to here, then it will work. And decode part here to here, and it will work. And I'm gonna put uh, some test cases. Then I'm, I'm gonna expect you some level of the answers correctly. So that is how you use the uh, Python notebook. And your code needs to be in a Python. Okay, I assume everybody understand the Python. If you're not familiar with the Python, this is a good time to start. If you're a computer scientist, and if you, as you are a computer scientist student, at the end of graduation, you will be fluent at least five or six computer languages. Cool. So for the uh, uh, computer networks, I'm asking you to use Python, okay? So Python version is not that critical. You can use Python 3 or you can use Python 2.7. But it's up to you based on your approaches. Let's say you have a multiple uh, Python version. How can you solve this? So you have to create the uh, uh, Python profile. You can create the profile in here with the multiple uh, Python version. Then your PIP and your uh, all installation should be different, meaning your environment setting should be different. How do you do this? So. In here, you are enabling Conda, Anaconda, and your profile, you just made it. And from there, you are keep updating your profile. So you have Python 2, Python 2, Python 3, right? And they, from there, you're building the environment. From there, you are building the environment, okay? All right, I think you know how to do this. Maybe it is too detailed. Okay, so I'm gonna based on based on the schedule. So homework number one will be given shortly. So next Wednesday. So I'm gonna uh, upload a video, but. Last time, the video is not recorded properly, so I don't have a video. So from today, I'm gonna upload a video, and I'm gonna um, upload the extra, which is the introduction to the Python, and we're gonna con continue the class, okay? So I'm gonna strictly follow this schedule. I'll try my best to follow it. And if you have a question, you can, the best way to ask question is a Google Classroom. You can start your thread, then everybody can share. Why is it necessary? Because if I keep answer to your email, there's a multiple copies of the same question over and over again. Okay, so please post your uh, question on the Google Classroom. Then I can answer one time, then also the other students who has a question on this can share the uh, uh, answer together. All right? All right, uh, any comment about the class? No. no? All right. Uh, thanks for coming today, and uh, if you have a question, you can send me an email, but the best way to do is a Google Classroom. If you have a personal uh, consult, you may send me an email, or you can knock my door, okay? All right, uh, thanks for coming today. Uh, guys, have a good day today. Bye, guys.